Hi guys, uh, Uncle Bob here again. Um, some of you uh, know that uh, one of my Claude builds, I was planning on putting the Tamiya BZ motors, but seeing how the orders kept getting screwed up and I couldn't find them, I decided to get the TZs. Um, damn near the same specs. Um, I don't know if you could see, but there is a zero marked on the can. Okay. Uh, getting my old uh, motor timing jig. If I line the zero up with the zero on the can, the brushes should be going straight across east and west compared to north and south. Um, so it's roughly, you know what, it's kind of hard to tell on, on, uh, the timing marks because some motors uh, like every three four millimeters is 10 degrees or every one millimeter is 10 degrees so I'm just gonna call this about 23 now the goal is to get that to zero so I could run it in the clod problem being is there a there's a tab on the end bell and a notch on the can that has to be taken out so I could rotate the end bell. Uh, so I'm going to do that. Uh, but before I do that, what I want to do is I want to test the RPM of this motor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in, I guess you can call it like a reluctor. Um, not really what it is, but that's what I'm going to call it. I'm going to stick it in to the uh, optic sensor. Positive, positive. Negative, negative. And this is going to be hard to see without me holding it up. What I'm going to do... Don't want motor test. Yes, I do. I want motor test. Uh, motor test, then I'm going to hit enter. Uh, I got it set for 7.5 volts. Uh, 7.5 volts is going to be between a nickel metal hydride and a lipo, a 7.2 or a 2S lipo. So let's hit enter and we're going to see what kind of readings we get in the RPM. I'm going to look this whole thing up. Okay, I'm going to call that roughly 26,000 RPM. Uh, the box states these run at 26,500 RPM. So I'm happy with the spec. Um, so now it's time to take the motor apart and I'll be right back. Okay, I got the end bell off. I'll grab my, my knife here, or knife, whatever you want to call it. Right there is that tab. What I'm going to do is I'm going to shave that tab down. I'm going to be very careful when I do it, and I'll be right back. Okay, the tab is gone. It was right next to this line here. This light sucks, I'm sorry guys. But you can actually see where I shaved it off. So, make sure my shims are still there. Oh! Before I go and do all that, there's something else I want to do, so I'll be right back. Okay. What I have here is a roll punch. You can tell it's a roll punch because it's got the little nub on it. So basically what I'm going to do is uh, go get a hammer. Okay, now that I got a hammer, because I'm an idiot and didn't think things, didn't think things through first, what I'm going to do, get a block of wood, I'm going to take my roll punch, I'm going to stick it right in the center of that bushing, and give it a little tap. 
That's all you need. All right. Now, that's the oil at bushing or bronze bushing, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to call it garbage. I'm going to replace them with uh, 1 8 by 3 8 by 5 30 second ball bearings. Uh, these are TRB RC bearings. Uh, and they're, uh, what are they rated? ABEC3s. I don't know if you guys can see that. I'm going to try to get the reflection out or shadow out of the way. Just in case you wanted to know the part number if you wanted to do this with your own motors. I only need two. So I got, uh, I got my two. And now, I want to make sure that the end bell is nice and flat. Get it in there, most of the way. I'm going to center it up. I'm going to try to center it up because now it's not, uh, because I'm on camera, I keep dropping things and it's not going right. Why are you a little so and so? All right. Well, I'll do it the other way. There. I just pushed it in. Plastic's really soft. Uh, now, when when you replace bearings, you want to make sure it's seated completely. Because if it's not seated completely. It will uh, be out of uh, out of alignment for the shaft on the armature. We'll get to that in a minute. Now, let me make sure this is seated. Just a heads up and a warning, guys. Uh, Tamiya uses like stamped aluminum locking rings for their uh, end bells and uh, their timing. <laughs> I said that twice. Uh, and it's very prone to bending if you tighten the end bell screws too tight. It's very light and very easily bends. So just be careful. Don't reef on the end bell screws. Just snug them up until you can't move the end bell. Check it every now and then. Uh, you know, and if it moves just very little, just give them like a quarter turn. Uh, don't go nuts tightening those up. Okay, as you can see. I knocked the bushing out of the can itself. Works better if I do it this way. Uh, don't forget to, to keep an eye on your shims so you know where they go. So, there's another junk one. And now to put the bearing in, I'm going to do the bearing off camera because I don't have plastic or wooden punches. so. I got to come up with my own way to get this in, so I'll be right back once I do. All right, I got the bearing seated, uh, and I got a little drop of oil on it. Now, before I go too crazy, try to uh, put this all together. I don't care which way this goes on right at the moment. I'm not tightening it down, but what I am going to do. I got a hood alignment tool. I'm going to slide it between the hoods. Oh man. And you see how you can't really tell, but it's very tight. So, what I want to do is I want to loosen up the four corners and the uh, hardware for the end bell. That's sliding a little better. Uh, this here is what they call a spring post wrench. It fits on there. Just give it a little turn. We'll take it out of the can for a minute. Give it a little turn. And it's going to loosen it all up and now it's sliding a little easier. 
trying to uh, get it all aligned. Let me make sure that uh, these screws are a little loose. Oh, no pressure whatsoever now. Now, to make sure I got the bearings lined up, there's a center hole in the tool that this goes in. And if you get it lined up right, that's if. Mm -hmm. That's if he says. There we go. I cheated. I didn't cheat enough. There we go. Now it's in there. Now I can push it straight through and it comes out the other side. There should be, once it's, once the end ball's tight, there should be no, no binding on that. That lets you know that your bearings or bushings are completely aligned. Okay, so now that that's done, I'll presume to tighten up the end ball hardware so it can't move. And I stripped that screw a little bit. That's all right. Um, still moves freely. Uh, now, oop. now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten up the spring posts. Make sure that they're nice and snug. Again, don't over tighten these things because they only screw in the plastic and if they're loose, uh, you're going to lose a little bit of continuity. And it will cause arcing, and arcing causes radio interference. So just snug them up. Get the brush out of the way, Bob. Pull that out, pull that out. Look at that. Slides nice and easy now. Everything's lined up good. All right, be right back. All right, guys, I got it all back together. Timing mark is now on zero instead of that notch there by the screw being over here. Um, again, these are going in a clod buster uh, and with fixed timing you cannot use them unless you set them to zero. I uh, already did the one, set it to reverse rotation. This one's still going to be the forward rotation. Uh, I went ahead and put the, uh, the, the sensor on, I guess. Reluctor, reluctor, I guess. This is the center. Uh, now, we did lose some timing, so it's not going to be as fast as it was before, even with the bearings in it. But I'm not really looking for super fast motors. I'm looking for efficiency and the ability to use said motors. So, I'm going to hook this up, and we're going to see... If it's any any worse or any better or close to the same, let's hope it's close to the same. It's hooked up. It's on motor test. I'm gonna pick this up so you guys can see too. Don't let it touch because it'll vibrate. All right, 7.5 volts. Drawing about two and a half amps. Running very close to 24,000 RPM. I'm sure that'll go up once the brush is set in. Uh, so call it 23,900. What was? 23,900, 23,800 to 26,500. You know what? I'm happy with that. I can live with it. Um, again, special motor tools are not necessary if you want to do all this kind of stuff. Um, but I do recommend trying to locate a timing jig, seeing how brush motors are a thing of, a pet, a thing of the past. They're, they're really hard to get a hold of. Um, 
I'm happy with this. I can't wait to uh, see how it's going to perform. But there are a few other things I need to do. These motor leads. This is a stock Cloudbuster motor lead. As you can see, it's twice as long. So, with that said, again, I'm totally unprepared. I'll be right back. Going from that skinnier wire, I am going to go with some 14 gauge wire and I can mimic the yellow and the green wires from the stock motors. Uh, in combination with that, I will be taking these steel pieces of junk uh, and replacing them with four millimeter gold plated bullet connectors. Uh, just just got to put the wires in and shrink tube them down and they'll plug in just like the Tamiya ones. So that's how I'm going to do that. Uh, again, this is all for uh, a Cloudbuster build. Uh, these two motors were actually out of my race clod and one's still reversed. Uh, these are uh, Trinity Speed Gems 2 Platinum 13 triples uh, and they don't have the spunk that they're supposed to have. So with all that said and done um, again I'm going to be taking these bullet connectors out because I really don't like them. Uh, I got to change this connector. That's going to go to a T plug or Dean's. Uh, seeing how most of the stuff I got are uh, a, a generic brand of Dean's plugs, so they're called T plugs. So I'll be using those. Uh, and that's it. Uh, any questions, comments? If I could help out any way I can, let me know, and uh, we'll see you when we uh, get the cloud building and uh, get these motors in. For now, thanks for watching guys, and catch you on the next one. Goodbye.